Welcome to Not Just a Transaction, the podcast series hosted by experienced real estate authorities, Nick Three Fontaine and Zachary Beach. Each week, the hosts bring you expert guests to help you navigate the many creative options available for buying or selling a home while cutting out the costly hurdles of a conventional real estate deal. This is Zachary Beach and Nick Prefontaine with another episode of Not Just a Transaction podcast, your number one podcast for both buyers and sellers in this wonderful real estate world. We are coming live from Rhode Island as we primarily buy and sell real estate in the lovely area of the country of New England. And we also do help out people across the country do the exact same thing. Today, today, we're going to talk about some misconceptions with rent to own or lease purchases. Nick, welcome to the podcast. Today only, Zach. I think it's important to mention we're only doing this. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm looking forward to diving into more detail over this topic because you and I both have a, a lot of thoughts on it. Yes, yes. Lots and lots of thoughts. Um, why do we have lots and lots of thoughts? Because uh, we've done this hundreds of times um, and also advise people on how to do this for thousands of times. And the same misconceptions pop up day in, day out. Because unfortunately, um, when we are taught growing up uh, the word real estate, we think of probably one, if not two things. One is you go uh, uh, associated with being a real estate or a licensed either realtor or broker. And then two in the modern day world is uh, fix and flips or people that are just trying to, or people that the business model is to get the least for the property and then turn around and sell it for, for much higher. Um, so where we come into play is we have very creative techniques and options in order to help both sellers like yourself be able to find uh, additional solutions to their challenges and for buyers like yourself to be able to find an additional path to home ownership where we've seen many buyers did not even know that that path existed. Today, as always, I will be wearing my seller's hat. I don't have a seller's hat if you watch this on YouTube. I wish I did. And maybe we can have somebody go ahead and uh, computerize a seller's hat on top of my head right now. A very small one. Maybe that's a note. We should we should get props. And Nick today will be always wearing his buyer's hat as well. Buyer top hat. Yes. No, of course. A very small top hat. Yep. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's just these these are not in any particular order. Uh, and these are not all of them. This was just a quick brainstorm for about five minutes to think of what are the misconceptions that pop up just right on the surface level. And I'm sure we'll do some more episodes where we would dive into more misconceptions because uh, we are here to be able to shed light so that way you're able to make the best decision for your family uh, with the asset or the real estate property that you currently have. So Nick, let's start on the buyer side. And one misconception when I'm speaking to a seller is buyers never actually like cash out. Buyers never actually get to the finish line. Nick, what do you have to say about that? Yeah. And those of you that can't, that are only listening to this and can't see me, I'm smiling at this fact because yesterday we had one of our rent home buyers cash out. <clears throat> they had a conventional closing and everyone was able to move on with, uh, with their lives. So these, this does work. Uh, the buyers do go forward and cash out the property and, um, the thing that's most exciting to me in doing, and Zach, you know this from all of our planning that we do, our, our offsite work and everything, that my focus right now is testimonials um, and getting testimonials from both happy buyers and happy sellers. And the doing several of these now, both, both just selling at a rent-to-own house, like initially when the, the rent-to-home buyer buys the property and so that testimonial and on the other end, once the buyer is able to get their own loan following up with both the seller and the buyer, 
the common theme that I'm getting is I was ready to give up. I was ready to give up just because I didn't know that an option like this existed. So I was happy to learn that, that we were here to give them, these buyers, an additional option going forward because it's foreign to a lot of people. Uh, this whole world of real estate, never mind our tiny, tiny niche within real estate, which is selling homes on a rent home. Yeah, you nailed it. And the, the truth is, although it may be a tiny niche today, it's expanding rather quickly because more and more people, specifically in this uh, time in which we are living in, are needing uh, an alternative path to both selling and buying their homes. I know we've got some metrics here and it looks like more and more, I think it's they're projecting up to 20% of all transactions are going to ha happen where the seller is acting as the bank or as we know it as seller financing. Um, well, another... Zach, let me, let me just, um, pile on what I was saying. So that was yesterday for Island. a deal, for a deal that we did in the past. Then we had another deal that we, we bought, we, we purchased in a different way, but we still sold it on a rent to own less than two years ago. So September of 2019, this was pre COVID that we sold it to the buyer he actually just closed on that today, uh, later today. So the proof is in the pudding. Um, and it is delicious pudding, if I do say so myself. I'm just going to ask, what type of pudding is that? Vanilla. Ah, oh, I like chocolate pudding better. Well, that's why both of us are on this show. As you mix it together, it's uh, vanilla and chocolate pudding together. Um, all right. That's how you describe the show. Or rainbow sherbet. Oh, rainbow sherbet. Love it. Another misconception, let, let's sit on the seller side, is that they believe that there's, there's all the risk is on the sellers. And I, I phrased it in my notes as saying, there's no liability in being an investor. And my, my, uh, my brain always goes to when being an investor is how you put food on the table, like is your business then every single thing you do has a liability associated with it. Because being a real estate investor, if you are not fulfilling your agreements and not fulfilling your promises, then that creates a bad name, bad credibility, uh, and so on. A bad reputation, period, which then leads to no more food on the table. So anytime in which I'm speaking to a seller, I always let them know, look, there's a major liability when it comes to... Um, me going through or us as a family going through this type of deal because we would never construct a deal with you or a transaction with you if we number one did not believe 100 percent that we were going to be able to get you to the finish line through uh, one of our means of uh, of selling the property either that be rent to own or other means uh because number one time is being wasted uh we have our entire team working on buying this property uh maintaining the property and then selling the property Two, wasted money, money on marketing and, uh, and of course, again, paying for the team in order to support it. And uh, number three would be uh, any time in which we are working with one transaction, we cannot work on another transaction, which means that there's huge opportunity cost uh, when it comes to that. And again, when us as a family, we support our families uh, via real estate investing, there's an enormous liability. So I just want to say this, like screaming from the rooftops is when we go ahead and purchase a property from you, it doesn't matter which option we do. This is a partnership. We uh, are in this for one thing, and that is to get you to the finish line. Because when you get to the finish line, our family gets to eat. We get we get some uh, some profit on our end, and then we continue to, to grow and scale our business. Uh, Nick, any thoughts round, on that? I'm just round of applause. We we get a round of applause once we uh, once we get those buyers to the finish line and we're able to cash you out so you can move on with your life. Oh, Standing that. ovation, actually. <laughs> I don't think we've ever received one of those, but that's okay. Um, the other one is uh, that uh, switching it back to the buyer side. And what we'll do is in this episode, we'll just cover two on each because we could be here all day with misconceptions. Nick, the second one of the misconception on the buyer side is uh, that buyers do not take care of the property 
just like the homeowners do. Ooh, that is a, uh, that's a, that's a really good one. So all of our buyers, a lot of, actually a lot of our buyers are, are self-employed people and they're familiar with contracting or remodeling property. So a lot of our buyers go into them and they're locking their price in. So the improvements and upgrades they're making to the property and the subsequent equity increase that occurs, that's to their benefit, not ours. Now, I'm not even talking about here the market appreciating, which in a lot of the markets that we have homes in, that we have houses in, the values do appreciate because we're getting, a lot of the homes that we're getting are nice homes in nice areas. So they tend to appreciate. I'm not promising that. However, um, that tends to be the case. So coupled with the market appreciation, coupled with the buyers maintaining and taking care of the property like it's their own, and in many cases, upgrading the property, we're finding that by the time our buyers, and this is, this is a two-date stat, by the time our buyers get to the end of their agreement, they're walking into anywhere from fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars in equity. Now that that's just over the last several deals. Obviously, it's property specific and deal specific, buyer specific, but that's pretty cool. That you as a rental home buyer locking in your price, you're walking into potentially fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars worth of equity. Yeah, especially as this market has been trending, you're right. We got we're getting buyers to the finish line, and everybody is happy. The seller is happy because they get cashed out with the appreciating market, uh, or even if it's a flat market, the buyers walking into a position where they're happy because they built an equity, and we're happy because we were able to make the entire transaction. Because it's not just a transaction, not just a transaction, uh, and they're able to we're able to get everyone to the finish line. The Second dose uh, misconception on the seller side is that miss misconception is that it's either not as effective to sell to an investor or it's not as um, the, the emotional attachment in which uh, the seller is selling to a traditional buyer is, is not there. Um, if that is, if I'm making sense. I know that when I speak to a lot of sellers, sellers in which have been living in their house for years and years and years, and they watch their family grow up there, and now they're looking to make a transition in their life, they almost want to have that direct connection from, uh, from seller to buyer. So that, that way they can see them, uh, that those buyers grow through the, the same great life experiences that they did. Uh, so that's a huge misconception because we are a massive conduit to be able to bring those types of buyers to the, to the table. Uh, and Absolutely. if anything, when you bring a buyer through our path to home ownership, there's almost more emotional attachment that comes with the process because they did not have uh, another way or they could not see, I should say, their perception was that they didn't have another way in order to be a home buyer. So, um, we enjoy that process uh, of bringing that, uh, that a new emotion to the table and helping somebody create a new life for their family. So uh, I just think it's a huge misconception because they just think, well, you're just an investor. You're just out there to make money. And um, although, like I said, we're here to make money, it's, it's, there's, uh, there's no doubt about that. This isn't a non-for-profit. But yes. uh, you're right. But we are able to bring so many uh, great happy endings to the table uh, by utilizing our program and connecting with us purchasing a property from the seller and then selling it to the buyer. Yeah, I just love to add on that, Zach. That that's a great point because the property that we just purchased and the buyer actually moved in. I I was coordinating with him and the seller, and the seller had trouble with this moving company. Um, getting there on time and they were a couple hours late. So I was going back and forth with both of them and they were, they were actually the sellers of the property were actually thrilled to meet the buyers, 
neat that they they are a real family uh, that went through challenges and they are kind of passing the cho- the jub jub. <laughs> passing, <laughs> the, <laughs> passing the torch, if you will. Um, they enjoyed the home. They made memories in the home. So it was time to pass the torch to these rent home buyers that were getting in the home. They get to meet and um, the seller voiced to me that that he really enjoyed that part. So a lot of the a lot of the people out there, a lot of the sellers that think that that's missing if you're selling to an investor, maybe other investors, but not us. Because it's not just a transaction. <laughs> well, if if you have other misconceptions or if you just want to speak to Nick or I or the uh, family team here at Pre-Property Solutions to see if you're a good fit for either a rent-to-own program or uh, one of our options on how we purchase properties, just go to um, prepropertysolutions.com forward slash podcast and go to the contact us uh, form at the bottom. And we would love to have an open dialogue with you and see if we could potentially help in any form or fashion or just get your questions answered. And Nick, why don't you just go ahead and uh, bring us on home? I'll wrap it up, Zach. I'll finish it up. So this has been another episode of Not Just a Transaction. And Zach already, with his seller hat on, he already covered you sellers out there where to go. Now, you buyers that are thinking that this might be a good option for you, you're going to want to head on over to our website. That's pre, P-R-E, property with a Y, solutions with an S, Dot com. Have a look first at the How Does Rent Home Work video that we have right in the homepage. That goes over how our rent home program works. And if it is a good fit for you, make sure you sign up for our new property updates. And we look forward to working with you real soon. Thanks for listening to another episode of Not Just a Transaction. If you want to learn more on selling a home, buying a home, for resources to learn more, head on over to our website at originalre.com.